Hello everyone. Thank you for being here. My name is Ekta Agarwal. I'm leading product at Docker. If you have tuned into this session, you are here to learn how Docker Desktop and Snowflake enable you as data professionals to build, compile, and to securely share data via containers in a more streamlined, rapid manner. We hope that this session eliminates the opportunity to further hone your skills as a data professional. The majority of this session will be demos, but before we dive in, let me lay a foundation of what Docker Desktop is and why it is valuable to data professionals. So Docker Desktop enables three aspects. One, consistency by providing stable and reliable development and testing environment with containerization that reduces the chance of environment-related errors. Second, portability across different environments, enabling easy movement of applications between development, testing, and production environments. This portability streamlines the process of scaling applications as they can be deployed in various environments without compatibility issues. Third, scalability and resource efficiency by isolating resources, ensuring that applications running within the containers do not interfere with one another. Now that you understand the value Docker can bring to you and your team, let's go a bit deeper on how Docker and Snowflake are coming together. So with the growth in the sheer number of applications that rely on data, we are invested in ensuring that containerization supports you in abstracting value and helps you to produce and provide consistent value within your organization. This is why we are partnering with Snowflake to provide you with a new level of efficiency in how you streamline the process across build, debug, and delivery of data with Docker Desktop and Snowpark Container Services. To show you how this is possible, I'm going to hand it over to Motoki Nakamura for a demo. Thanks, Ekta. Hello, everyone. I'm excited to be here to show you how Docker Desktop can assist you and your teams with the maneuverability of all the code you spend such valuable time creating. My name is Motoki Nakamura, a senior data engineer here at Docker. I've worked in the data space for many years, specializing in data engineering and data architecture, and have been an avid user of Snowflake for over five years now. Today, I'll showcase how, by using Docker Desktop, you can streamline and create efficiencies for transitioning from local data development to production. First, I'm going to show you how to create a Docker image using Docker Desktop, helping you drive consistency by encapsulating your code, libraries, dependencies, and configurations in an image. Then, I'll show you how to push that image to a registry, making it portable and available to others with the right permissions. And finally, I'll show you how to run the container as a job in Snowpark Container Services to help you scale your work with versioning and distributed deployments. For today's demonstration, we're going to use Docker and Snowflake together for the given scenario. We're going to pull weather data to help enrich the data we have for an application that tracks the best time to go whale watching. We'll call this the Orca Tracker. So here we have our script. It might look something like this. We have main.py, which calls the Open Weather's API. And here we'll be passing in city names as arguments. As for the script itself, uh, we'll be first calling the geocode API to get the coordinates of those cities followed by then getting the weather itself at those coordinates. One other thing worth noting here is that we'll be using .m to load uh, our secrets in as environment variables. We also have a requirements.txt file with which we list all of our dependencies. Now on the Snowflake side, in order to run this, we have a few objects we need to set up. First, starting with a database and schema with which we will write all this into, followed by a role and user with which we will be using to run the script with and followed by a virtual warehouse. So let's go ahead and run all of this to, so that we're able to run the, uh, the script. So now we have our database and schema. We're then going to create the role uh, and all the relevant permissions assigned to that role. We'll then create our user and assign the role that we just created to that user. And finally, our virtual warehouse. And we will grant uh, usage and operate permissions to that role we just created as well. Now, to ensure that everything actually works, let's try running our script locally before we go any further. So let's start by ensuring that there's actually nothing in that schema that we just created. Good. And then uh, let's run that script here. Uh, let's start by setting up uh, our virtual environment. So we'll activate it first followed by then installing all of our requirements. And then as mentioned before, we need to pass our cities in as uh, arguments in order to run this. So we're gonna run Python main.py followed by a list of cities in which we want to know the current weather. 
As you can see, uh, we start by geocoding those cities. Now we're fetching those uh, the weather at those coordinates. And now it's taking all those results and writing them back into Snowflake. Excellent. Things look done. Things look good. Let's see if any new tables have been created in the schema. There has one called temperatures in that Orca Tracker database and weather schema that we just created. And let's take a look inside that table. Why not? So you can see we have a bunch of weather data, specifically temperatures, as well as the cities and some flat on coordinate, uh, coordinates as well. Now the goal is to get this somewhere where others can access it and run it themselves in the cloud to process large volumes of data. To do that, let's get this running in a container. And this is where Docker comes in. Docker allows you to build a sandbox process running on a host machine that is isolated from all the other processes running on that host machine. So some terminology here for those who may be new to Docker. Docker image is a self-contained static file that encapsulates both the essential information and code required for an application to run as a contained operating system agnostic entity. A container, on the other hand, is a runnable instance of an image. You can download Docker desktop here at docker.com. Once you've done so, you'll be able to build images and containers. To create an image, we need to create what is called a Docker file. The instructions of a Docker file are run in order. It must begin with a from instruction. The from instruction specifies the parent image from which you are building. In this case, we'll be working off the official Python 3.10 image. The add instruction copies new files or directories and adds them to the file system of the image at the specified path, which in this case is a root directory. The run instruction will execute commands, which in this case will install all of our dependencies as listed in the requirements file. Now that we have our Docker file, why don't we try creating our first image? We can do so with a Docker build command. At the time of this recording, Snowflake currently only supports AMD64 images, so we'll specify that here with a platform option. We'll then name the image as Docker SPCS and tag it as demo. The dot here at the end specifies the path to the Docker file that we want to use. While this runs, this will take a few minutes. In this case, the build time is mostly going to be on the parent image, which is Python. We'll come back in a few minutes once this build is complete. And we're back. That took about two minutes. And now we can find our image on our machine by running the docker images command. As you can see, our image docker SPCS is right here with a tag demo as expected. Now let's try taking a look at the file structure within the image itself. The docker run command is one that will create and run a new container from an image. By using the dash IT flag here, we can then use it to create an interactive bash cell in the container. Now let's look at the files here in that root directory. And as you can see here, the files that we added in the Docker file, namely requirements.txt and main.py are here. However, the files that we did not add, like the .m file and the Docker file are not. Let's try running our script in, in a container itself. To run the script, we can use the same docker run command from earlier. However, we need to pass the environment variables in order for this to work. There are a few ways that we can do this, but for this, ex for this example, we'll use the mfile option here. Now, while this is running, what we would expect to see is the same logs that came out from earlier. So namely, the geocoding in the cities followed by the fetching of the weather patterns, and then the uploading of the results into Snowflake. These logs look exactly the same. And success, we've now successfully built a Docker image and run it in a, run the script in a container using Docker Desktop. However, this alone isn't particularly useful. We went from running the script locally on our machine to running it in a container that's running locally on our machine. The useful part comes with the portability. So for the next step, let's push this image to our registry. To run this in Snowflake, we'll need a few new objects. A compute pool is a collection of virtual machine nodes on which your jobs and services are run. You can think of this as analogous to a virtual warehouse. Since this is a simple job, we will have it run on just one node. The instance family determines the type of machine and the amount of compute resources provided. Standard one is the smallest. Let's be sure to grant privileges to the compute pool to our role as well. An image repository is where we will store all of our images, which in this case is within the Snowflake registry. 
We'll also need to create a stage for us to upload our job spec file, which we will get to shortly. As this job also pulls from an API, we'll need to add the API key as a secret. And lastly, we'll specifically need the security integration to run Snowpark Container Services. Now that we have these objects set up, we need our registry hosting and repository URL. We can get this by running the show image repositories command. As you can see here, we have our repository URL here. And let's take a closer look at that. There are two parts of this. Everything before the first backslash is the registry hosting, followed by the image repository, which as you can see here is a database, the schema, and the repo name. All of this together is a repository URL. This is important as we'll be pushing to a private registry, which requires you to tag the image to the registry itself. We can tag our image using the Docker tag command. Here we are tagging the image we built earlier. This is a repository URL that we also just copied. Lastly, we can give it a new image name or tag if we wanted to, but for the purposes of this demo, we can keep them the same. Once this tag is created, we'll be able to see this newly tagged image using the same command we ran earlier, Docker images. This is the image we will be pushing to our private registry. To do that, let's start by authenticating using the Docker login command. It'll be Docker login followed by the registry name that we copied earlier. The dash u is for username, and this is a Snowflake username that we wish to log in as. The password will also be the Snowflake password for this user. All right, now we're logged in. We can now push our image using Docker push. Let's start by copying this value here of the image we wish to push. We will want to write Docker push followed by this value then if we wish to add a tag, we can also include that as well. This is going to push the image to the Snowflake registry. If you'd like to share the image with members outside of Snowflake, there are also other registries that you can push it to as well. Your organization may already use a registry, such as Docker Hub. You can push this to those registries following the same steps with Docker tag, Docker login, and Docker push. While the image is being pushed, this can take a few minutes depending on the size of the image. We'll come back once this is complete. Okay, and we're back. That took a few minutes, and now that image should be available to us on Snowflake. So let's quickly recap. So far, we've created a Docker image using Docker Desktop. Then we push that image to a registry, and which in this case is Snowflake. Next, let's get ready to run this job in Snowflake using Snowpark Container Services. To do so, we're going to want to create a spec file. Your spec file might look something like this. Your spec file gives Snowflake the necessary information to configure and run your service or job. It gives some critical information such as which image to use here or any environment variables you may want to pass. One thing worth noting here is that using the Snowflake secret parameter here, we are also uh, passing access to the secret object from Snowflake itself. There's a lot more you can do than just what's shown here, including volumes and resource management, something worth checking out for different use cases. Our next step is we're going to want to upload this file to Snowflake itself. You can do this by using the put command in SnowSQL, but today let's go ahead and use a web interface. What you're going to want to do is you're going to go into the data section here in SnowSite, and then you're going to want to find the stage that we created earlier. Then you're going to want to go ahead and upload the spec file. And once this is uploaded, you're ready to run your job. So let's go ahead and jump back into our worksheet here. And what we're going to want to run is this execute service command. You're going to want to specify the compute pool that we created earlier, alongside the stage in which we uploaded our spec file and the spec file name. So before we run that, let's take a look at what's inside the temperatures table. We have 16 rows. Now let's go ahead and run the job itself here. And that's it. We now just have to wait for the job to finish. Uh, depending on the state of the compute pool when you run this, it may take more time. You can check the state by running the show compute pools command. You can also check the status of the job using the get job status function here, or you can also get the, the log from within the container itself using the get job logs here. As you can see, that job now just completed. 
If we were to run the get job status function, we can also paste our query ID here. And you can see that it completed successfully along with some other information, including which image that we just used. And if we were to run the get job logs command, we'll be able to see the very familiar logs that we saw earlier, seeing it geocode the cities and then fetching the weather after that, as well as uploading the results back into Snowflake. And we're done. You have now successfully run a job in Snowflake Container Services, and I'll throw it back to you, Akta. Thank you, Mudoki. That was great. The time you save streaming this process is invaluable. Using Docker Desktop enables you as the owner, provides you with independence, and makes you efficient. You can now effortlessly deploy within Snowpark Container Services, keeping your data secure within Snowflake. And remember, while this demo focuses on how Docker can help with your Snowpark deployments, Docker can also help you achieve so much more. We are investing in the power of AI ML in new ways to ensure your onboarding and use of Docker successfully. Let me introduce Jim Clark, who will show you just how we plan to do this. Over to you, Jim. Thanks, Ekta. Hi, everyone. My name is Jim. I work in Docker Labs, and today I'm going to introduce you to a project that we call Docker AI. So we're starting with the same project that you've already seen, Python file, Snowpark, job spec. There is no Docker file in this project. So I'm going to show you how Docker AI can help you create the right Docker file for your project. So we're going to select a base image as like we normally do. I'll use 3.10. And now we see that Docker AI can auto complete a Docker file based on the contents of the project. This includes best practices like not using a root user and using mount points to speed up the build. So let's save that. We already have a Snowpark job spec. So we can see that this is a project that might need to be deployed to Snowpark. So going to ask Docker again, we can reanalyze the project and make a few suggestions as to what questions a user might want to answer. Here, I'll, I'll select, how do I deploy to Snowpark? And we generate a notebook that has the instructions that you've already seen. We need to build, we need to log in, we need to tag, and we need to push. There's also a problem that we've noted down below, which is that this project needs a Docker, a Docker ignore file. So let's click on that, create that file, and see that Docker AI automatically populates this with the rules that are correct for a Python project. So back in the notebook on how to best do this deployment, we see that we need to do a build. And we can make sure that that build runs by clicking right inside of the notebook and executing the build in, in a shell. If the build had failed, we could go in and make some further suggestions to the user as to how they might want to remediate that. Same thing with our Docker login, with our Docker tag, and with our, with our Docker push. Docker AI keeps track of best practices and helps onboard developers using the context of the project to make the right recommendations. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Our continued investment in Docker Desktop AI, along with key partners like Snowflake, provide you with the necessary tool to take ownership, enable independence, and become a leader of your team and beyond. Hope you are as excited as we are. Following today's session, we have four different ways that you can get started. First, download Docker Desktop. Check with your admins. You may be surprised to find out your organization is already using Docker. Or you can get started today by searching for Docker Desktop online or scanning this QR code. Second, you want to dive deeper into the first demo? Try using Snowpark and Docker Desktop by visiting GitHub and get started today. Are you interested in our second demo and eager to learn and try about Docker AI? Scan the QR code. And finally, want to learn more, connect with others, and become part of one of the largest developer communities in the world? Join our Docker community by scanning the fourth QR code. Thank you again for joining the session. We are excited to see what you do next. Thank you all. Have a great day.